What's up, everybody? I don't know if you noticed, but in the last couple videos, I've been trying to be a little more practical in the concepts, you know, so kind of present a concept and then maybe give some practical applications because I think it's it's real easy to get lost and especially for me, I could, I could be just like a hippie, like get lost in just contemplating and, t and thinking about and, and speaking on all these spiritual things. But how do you realistically apply that? How, how is that applicable to our life, to make our life better, um, for us to make the world better? You know, how do these things apply? So what I wanted to talk about today is the concept of, of fighting and fighting dragons. Now, there's a couple different metaphors the Bible uses for, for challenging situations or for struggles, right? It talks about you know, giants, and I, and I use that a lot in my music because that really speaks to me, you know, being a giant killer and, and fighting these giants in life because they will come, you know, and there's, there's a lot of them. Or the Bible talks about, you know, mountains and overcoming mountains and, you know, kind of climbing those mountains metaphorically. And uh, another thing the Bible talks about is a spiritual enemy that we have, you know, called the devil, the dragon, the great serpent. And, you know, one thing I do not want to do with this video is make it seem like every single issue in our lives is caused by the devil, right? So, have, have you ever seen these type of people where they're like, they'll stub their toe and be like, oh, the devil made me stub my toe. I was walking and then the devil did it. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm like, so the devil, you know, he's not omnipresent can't be everywhere at the same time so the devil instead of like influencing some world leader or s some some illuminati type of stuff he came to your house so you could stub your toe i don't think so you know so again we don't want to make him bigger than he is we just want to put him on his right uh level which is under the feet of jesus in jesus mighty name but this concept of fighting dragons, right, of, of, of seeking out and fighting dragons, I think a lot of times things happen in our lives that God is actually doing and we attribute it to the devil. We give credit to the devil, you know. For example, when Jesus came, you know, one of the reasons Jesus came in 1 John 3, 8, it says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil right? The works of the serpent, the works of the dragon. And a um, and very interesting thing that happens is after Jesus gets baptized, he is led by the spirit out into the desert to, to battle with the devil, right? To be tested by the devil. And Matthew 4, 1 says, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So it was the spirit that led him out into the battle, right? And, and the way that Jesus there was tested in the original Greek, it's, it's like what I've been saying in a bunch of these videos. It's like the testing of a crucible where you test the purity of a metal, right? Where, you, where you're put under fire to see what's there. You know, it's just a, almost, I don't want to say a neutral test, but it just exposes what's already there. Right? So we don't need to be ashamed of it or afraid of it, but we just need to be honest. It takes truth to look at when we're put in a, in a test, in the crucible, and things come out and we see them, we shouldn't run from them. We should look at them, acknowledge them honestly, as honestly as we can, give them up to God, and then move forward and see how we do the next test, right? So these battles will come. When it, there's so many things we can learn about the way Jesus dealt with the battles. He's always proactive, right? He's the lamb sacrificed before the foundation of the world. It was like he looked ahead, saw exactly what was going to happen, and prepared and was ready to do whatever it would take to be proactive and not just reactive, right? Most of us wait till things go horribly wrong in our life and then we react to them instead of seeking out symbolically the dragons in our lives and and dealing with them straightforward ephesians 6 10 through 17 if you guys know this it's about the armor of god to put on the full armor of god so when we're going into these battles which we will 
so that we can be equipped to, to stand in that day, to not have to run or cower, but to stand in the victory that is already Christ's, but we still have to go through these battles, right? He's won the long war, but we have battles that we partake in sometimes every day, you know, that, that we have to be equipped to fight with. So stand there. Here, let me see where I should start. I'm going to just read the whole thing. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you could take your stand against the devil's schemes. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, singular, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, which is incredibly important, to stand in truth and to speak truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Oh, I could break. We could speak on each one of those things for weeks, right? But those are the basic necessities in our war against the enemy, right? Truth, righteousness, salvation, peace, um, and the and the sword of the spirit, right? The word of God. That is how we equip ourselves. Now, how how is this practical in our life? Like, you know, how how do we use this? You know, well, one, we notice that it's the Holy Spirit that will bring us to these battles. It's the Holy Spirit that drew Jesus out into the wilderness. It's the Holy Spirit that orchestrates certain battles. I'm not saying he does them all. If you got horrible things happening in your life, I'm not saying God caused those. What I'm saying is that sometimes he does cause us to go into a battle and to be tested, right? And when I see people say things like they haven't experienced, you know, you know, I don't feel God or I don't see this or I don't, you know, I'm not seeing any of these things that you're saying or what the Bible says. Well, I would ask this, right? If you are, or if we are, sitting on a couch, eating Cheetos and potato chips and binging Netflix for weeks or months or perhaps years, and we're like, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see any of these things God said he's going to equip us with. Why would you need it? Why would you even need it? But now on the other hand, if you're a missionary in Africa that's planning an orphanage because you're trying to save all these kids that don't have families that might be dragged out into child labor or child, child soldiers or, or, or sexual slavery, if, you're on the, uh, if you've been called to the uh, front line of certain battlegrounds, you're going to see it. God is going to show up mightily in those times. You know, so... <clears throat> A, a smaller way that this would show up is in everyday situations we have in life where we're not confronting certain issues, whether they're bills, whether they're arguments, what, you know, whatever it may be. You know those things that just kind of stack up and you're like, I don't want to deal with that right now. I'll just deal with that at some other time. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like dealing with that. Those little baby dragons, you, you leave them sit there and they grow and they grow and they grow till it's this huge thing and you still have to eventually deal with it, right? Except you've had anxiety the whole time while you were putting it off, right? So it's almost like one of the... If we had to break all these things down, you know, like how Jesus broke all the law down into basically one thing, love, right? Love God, love people. That's it. Not just the Ten Commandments, but the 400 and something commandments, plus all the, you know, thousands of pages of scripture that can be broke down, kind of distilled and purified into such a simple thing. Love, love, love God, love people. 
in the same way, not, you know, in a similar way, I believe all these things, all these videos that I've been doing can be kind of distilled into a simple thing. We have a part of our uh, life that is the known and then we have the unknown, right? And life is having one foot in the known, one foot in the unknown and pushing forward, going into the unknown and exploring and seeing what's there, seeing, you know, Usually it's darkness and chaos, speaking life into it and kind of organizing order out of that chaos, facing those dragons, facing those giants, facing those mountains and speaking order into them, right? And I believe that the best way, not the only way, because you can do it any way you want, but the best way and the truest way and the way that transcends all this is to do that with the Spirit of God, faith in Christ. He is the, the, he's not only the light that is inside of us, he is the light that is, you know, he's in front of us, behind us, next to us, inside of us. He is also the light that we follow forward as well as being the light that's inside of us. So I hope all that made sense. Fight some dragons in your life. You know, we're called to war. We're called to war. But during, during the war, we're also called to be love and light and grace and mercy and kindness to people because we're not fighting against people. We're warring against principalities and powers, right? So, y'all have a blessed weekend. I love you in the mighty name of Jesus.